how I, how I was able to use price action to benefit on the Amazon trade. All right, so first thing I'm gonna show you guys is what I have drawn here. So this is a trend line that's going upwards, and this is the trend line that's at the top, which is resistance. This is shaping up to be what we call a bear flag. Okay, so you can draw this like this. So this is a bearish. This is a bearish trend. Okay, so because of this bear flag, our target price could be somewhere uh, up here for Amazon uh, very very soon, and this is a weekly time frame. So when I was looking at this time frame, I always work my way from the weekly to the daily and then to the intraday charts. Okay, so if I look at this time frame, there's something that we have to understand here: what's going on and the characteristics of this time. So first thing I always look at, I use a I use a wave theory. Okay, this is a Wickenoff methodology. Okay, you have to look at the waves. Where is the strength? So in a healthy uptrend, right, you'll have waves that are stronger on the upside versus the downside. The pullbacks are very, very weak, right? However, this was in 2018, the pullback was steep because 2018, we also had a market correction, right? So then on a healthy trend, we have a pull up, down is small, up, down is small, then consolidates, then we have a breakout like this. However, this was the best breakout you could have ever had on Amazon, where we had a nice wave up, small pullback, wave up, small pullback, wave up and small pullback. This is ideal what you want in a healthy uptrend. Okay. This was where you do not need to take profits. You just hold on and let it ride. Or you can keep adding on to your position because the pressure just keeps adding up. Amazon was basing or consolidating for a long time before it broke out. Now we have to realize Amazon did the same thing, but instead of breaking out, it's breaking down. Right? So we have a consolidation zone here. Okay. This consolidation zone has lasted since, uh, what is this? This is about, yeah, May of 2020, and it finally broke down on uh, 2022, okay, which is January. So almost about two years, so a year and some time, so almost close to two years. And uh, since we have this breakdown finally, uh, when I switched down to my intraday time frame, what I was looking at was, okay, so earnings came out, Amazon did some crazy earnings, but it was due to Rivian's profits not having anything to do with Amazon. If the Amazon didn't have Ravina's profits, their EPS would not have, the, have been that great. Second thing, Amazon's consolidating and then breaking down. So the trend is consolidations, right? Breakdown, consolidation, breakdown, okay? So right now we're still following that. We try to push here. This was an important level. In a, in a healthy uptrend, you're gonna have a stock that pulls back lower and then keeps going higher. In the downtrend, we're gonna have a pull, we're gonna have a stock that keeps falling steeper and then when it tries to retrace, it's not as heavy. See, like, look, this wave down is steep and this pullback is weak, right? So we just gotta switch it over to the line chart. Look, pull down and this pull, pull back is very, very weak, right? Look at the steep sell-off, weak, and falls back again. Now, we, <coughs> this is where the sell-off started from in our current time frame. This area becomes an area of interest. This is where price can be accepted. This is becomes a battleground. So when I was looking at this, I was watching to see if Amazon can get above this. It failed to do so. So now well, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look here and see Amazon, what it did, the characteristics. This was a nice support level on Amazon, right? So it kept bouncing from here. Uh, this is a quick area, but then you see how it broke down here. This was one trade. But the trade that I took was this trade right here on the 15 minute was this right here. Well, continues, we have a break of support, right? Multiple uh, areas were violated here. Continuous downtrend, right? So we have an interim uptrend line break, break, breaking, downtrend lines holding. We have a second trend line that tried to hold, which is smaller trend line. And now they broke that as well. Pressure, you can see pressure on the downside. Uh, there was low liquidity for a couple of days, right? And the uh, last two days, we had more liquidity on the sell side on the 15 minute than right in the morning. As soon as it got below this level, right about here, 2877, uh, uh, which was below the previous day's low. And you can see it was this level right here that was holding this gap. So this gap got filled so fast, right? To the downside with the volume picking up. And now if we look at it, where where are we? We're in this level where price was tested 
uh, back when we had the correction in uh, January. So we're gonna go test the January lows. If this level continues to fall, uh, we can easily go back down uh, to 26, 24. So we'll have a look at the CPI data coming up this week. But this trade that it made uh, close to around $3,000 in a matter of 15 minutes. Okay, so this was the trade to make. And the reason for that trade, price action. Follow price action. Price is always telling us, do not get in early. Wait for the pullback. If price is going to change, it'll give you the characteristics of that change. Don't chase the price. Let the price come to important levels. We'll wait for the test and then execute. Oh,